let your glory, let it fill this place. Lord, let your glory, let it fill this place. Lord, we lift your name on high. You're the God of earth and sky as we offer you this praise.
thou hast formed the earth. For a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday. When it is past, as they watch in the night. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. I was brought low, and he helped me. This is my comfort in my affliction. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. May the Lord have a blessing on the hearers, readers, and the doers of his holy and most righteous word. You may be seated. Most of you know we're gathered here today to celebrate, and I have to emphasize that word, to celebrate the life, the legacy, and the love of our dear sister, Sister Renee Powell. And I want to remind you throughout this service, we're here to celebrate because she's not lost. She is with the Lord in glory. When we leave these bodies in Christ, we go to be with the Lord. And we can stand on that promise because God promises that. So what we're going to do today is we are going to have a good time. There'll be some grieving, which is us missing her presence. But if we trust in God and know him and know his word, we know that we will see her again, those in Christ that is. So I want to greet you this morning. My name is uh, Dr. Gerald Wattis. I am the pastor of Central Baptist Church here. And again, I just want to remind you that we are going to have a good time. We're going to uh, follow the program as printed. We're going to start with the scripture reading brought to us by Oh, the scripture reading. We're going to have scripture readings. Old Testament will be brought to us by Minister Grover. New Testament brought to us by Minister Ramsey. Prayer of Comfort will be brought to us by Minister Johnson. Then we'll have a musical selection by our music ministry. Then we'll go into the remarks by grandchildren, Morgan Cameron uh, and uh, Tyson Powell, all the Powell grandchildren. Then we'll have remarks by Renee's sons, Ove Powell and Damian Powell. Then we'll move into the obituary reading, which is not printed on here, but it's just been added. Then we'll go back to a musical selection, and I will come back to you with the eulogy. So we'll go with the program and go with that even the added uh, feature into the program. So let's give the Lord a hand of praise here today. Praise the Lord. My name is Ricky Grover. I'm an associate pastor here. And I stand before you to read the Old Testament, a familiar psalm, Psalm 23, a familiar psalm that uh, I want to share with the family on this morning. And it reads as thus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. 
my cup run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. Praise the Lord, family. My name is Minister Ramsey. I'm bringing you the New Testament in Jesus' name. Coming from Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Amen. And it reads, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The reading of the word. My name is Minister Ronald Johnson. Let us bow our heads for prayer at this time. Dear Lord God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We celebrate, Lord God, the life and the legacy of our sister and our friend, Renee Powell. Oh, Lord God, she served. From the food giveaway, Lord God, to the praise team, to the ministries in the church, Lord God, and she served well. And so we just look to you, Lord God, because if she was here right now, Lord God, she would be praising God and worshiping and lifting your name up. Oh, how we thank you, Lord God, for our sister and our friend in Christ, Renee Powell. We pray for the family right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, give them your grace. Give them your mercy, Lord God. Give them your love at this time, Lord God, as they go through the loss of their mother, their aunt, their sister, whatever, Lord God. We just pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Touch them, Lord God, right now. Give them what they stand in need of, Lord God. And we just pray, Lord God, that you continue to help us, that we can serve, that we can go out to a dying world and tell others about Jesus Christ, as Renee Powell did. Thank you, Lord God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
We're going to have the uh, grandchildren, Morgan, Cameron, and Tyson Powell, come forward at this time to uh, give remarks, if you will. First Thess Thessalonians 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, who are still alive and remain on the earth, will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So, encur so encourage each other and other with these words. Second Corinthians 3 through 4, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is merciful, Father, and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in our trouble so that we can comfort others. Um, I like to say, like, my favorite memories with my grandma was uh, going to... Uh, Get up in the stands and see where every number of my basketball games. <laughs> for my grandma, I made a poem for her. A gentle light. In the quiet of the morning, where the sunlight softly spills, there's a gentle light that lingers with the warmth of loving wills. Grandma Renee, you touched our lives with like a sunrise touches dawn, with a grace that gently guides us, though now you are forever gone. Your laughter was like a melody a song of pure delight that danced upon our memories like stars upon the night. In your eyes, a twinkle bright, a story softly told, our love that wraps around us of a heart that's pure and bold. The stories you would whisper of days both old and new taught us how to cherish and see the world anew. With every hug, you nourished us. With every word, a guide. In your love, we found our strength, a beacon by our side. Though the world may seem a little dim, now that you are not near, your light will keep on shining through the love we hold so dear. We carry forth your wisdom and the warmth you always gave. In our hearts, you'll live forever in the paths you helped pave. So here's to you, dear Grandma, as we say our last goodbye. Your spirits roar above us like a whisper in the sky. We'll treasure, we'll treasure every memory in honor of what you've done. For in our hearts, you touch so deeply. Your light will always run. Please rest in peace, Grandma. I know that where you are is supposed to be your sweet relief. And although you are not here, no longer, please know that all of us here miss you today and we will forever love you, Grandma Renee Powell.
Thank you for listening. Amen. Amen. Let's give them another hand. Yes. Public speaking is one of the most difficult things for anyone to do. And when you think about the setting and what's going on today, it makes it even more difficult. So they did an outstanding job. These young people did an outstanding job. And if we could do better than that, let's give them a hearty hand praise. Or a hand, that is. All right, we're going to have uh, Ove Powell and Damian Powell come at this time. So you, you up to it? All right, here comes uh, Jordy. Just kidding. Um, I'm going to try to keep it together up here best I can and focus on uh, the celebration part best I can. <clears throat> um, first, I just want to thank everybody that helped put this together. You know, my mom loved this church. She had so many good relationships. And I just want to say thank you to everybody to contribute to, to make this happen and make this a beautiful service. She would have, she really would appreciate it and love that. And to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, everybody who contributed. Thank you. Again, I want to focus on the positive best I can, you know. Um, <clears throat> I want to see it as a blessing that I had her for 75 years. You know, a lot, <clears throat> a lot of people don't get that much. So. <sighs> All right. You know, we had her for 75 good years, and she had such an impact on so many lives everybody who came in contact with her. So many relationships here at the church. Her best friend flew in town today from uh, Atlanta, Maryland. They met in the sixth grade at Walton Junior High in Compton. And she's here today. When I think about my mom, I think of somebody who was extremely tough. She's been through so much and that's hardened her up. She was extremely tough. Me and my brother called her a gangster. <laughs> All right? She was a gangster. And nothing could faze her. She dealt with stress and, and, and setback and disappointment. She would just say, oh, well, we'll be fine. We'll move on. And I'm like, Mom, how could you just take it like that? Like, this is devastating. Oh, well, we'll just, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. And she, that's how she... No matter what would happen. Oh, well, come on, let's go. So, yeah, if she would, we'll make it right. And we would just move on. You know? She was a great lady. Again, impacting so many lives. Something we can really model our lives after. Is just try to impact as many lives as you can while you're on this earth. Uh, not just at the church. Um, everywhere she went, she had a positive impact. You know, I coach high school basketball, and she got close to all the families. I coach two travel ball teams of Fortune U. She got close to all the families, and all of them are just coming up to me saying the impact she had and the conversations she had on people and the lunches they had in Vegas, the lunches they had in Phoenix, and uh, just the impact she would have on people. It was an amazing gift. Uh, even on her street, you know, Carson and uh, Rainsbury, the impact she had on the whole block was amazing. People I didn't even know, whenever I go down that street, uh, people stop me as I'm driving. Like, hey, excuse me, ho, ho, ho. You know, are you Renee's son? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Hey, pull over. And they say, hey, you know, let me get your number. You know, Renee did this for me. She helped me when I had a heart attack. She brought this food to me. I mean, all the whole block. She would give gifts to the whole block for Christmas. Stuff I didn't even know but I know that's consistent with her character. So when, 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 they, when they found out she passed, the whole block was in mourning. The whole block wanted to talk to me and just share some good experiences and the impact she had on the whole street. 
the whole block wanted to come together and do whatever they could to help things. And that's just a microcosm of the impact that she had on this world. I can't tell you how many times I go places and people tell me they took her class, um, how great of a teacher she was, and they're shocked that she's not here. Um, just the impact. And uh, I think my favorite memories is just of her um, at sporting events. You know, I played basketball, I played at USC, and she was at every one of my high school games, every one of my games at USC. She was always supportive, never critical. She came to almost every of the kids' games. Um, she came to almost every recital of, of Morgan, and that, was, that brought her the most joy, was to come to church, watch the kids do their recitals or their sports, and then we had a little routine at the end, the last year or so. She would go to church, come to the kids' games, and then we would go to Roscoe's uh, in Long Beach and, and uh, eat on, on her dime. That was the best part, eat on her dime. <laughs> So I know the grandkids got fond of like, call grandma after church, see if she'll take us to Roscoe's. <laughs> and we would sit there and just, and just look to laugh and talk and eat. And uh, those are the good times. You know, we would just, just share, share talking and enjoy each other's company. Um, and how proud she was of her grandkids, all three of them, super proud. And uh, right before she passed, we went, we went on two road trips together to watch the kids play. We went to Section 7 um, in Phoenix. We drove to Phoenix together, roomed together, ate every meal together, drove back. Um, after every game, she would take me and Tyson and the family out to BJ's to eat after every game. That was like the highlight of Phoenix. No matter what happened in the game, we would go to BJ's sometimes 10, 10.30 at night and all share a meal again on her dime. That was a nice part. And uh, she just loved watching them. Whether he had 15 points, no points, she just enjoyed watching the kids perform and uh, out there. And she didn't know much about sports, but she would try to help Tyson and Cameron as much as she could. And she, I remember her telling Tyson, Tyson, you gotta focus, you gotta follow through. <laughs> follow through. And uh, you know, I always remember that. She used two hands, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, the last trip was Vegas. This was literally a few days before she passed. We drove to Vegas together. We roomed together. We ate every meal together. She went to both grandkids' games all throughout the city of Vegas together, and she was on cloud nine. She met with all the families, ate with them, and just she was just on cloud nine. And, um, you know, she was walking all over the place. To me, a picture of perfect health. I was telling the story to some people that one night in Vegas, we were at the MGM Grand. It was 10.46. I looked at my phone. And she said, Damon, let's go to the food court. I said, Mom, it's 10.46 at night. That's like a mile away. You know, if you for your room to the hotel, through the casino, you know, through the corridors, you know, through the booking. But she wanted to get something to eat. And uh, i just really grateful that I had that week with her before she That was literally seven days before she passed. We spent four days, all day, every day together. And uh, we, we got into a routine driving to Vegas and uh, to pass the time by. I would play a song, and then she got a chance to pick a song, and we would just kind of alternate. And as we were alternating, picking songs, um, I was asking her about her childhood before Damon and Ove came about. And she just kind of wove this great story of her childhood. You know, my mom went to, grew up in South Central. She went to Manchester Elementary. Then they moved to Compton. And I said, well, Mom, how did you get to Walton? Because, you know, today's age, the parents drive their kids everywhere, right? You pick them up, you drop them off. And she said, we walked. I said, what? You walked all the way to Walton Junior High and back? She said, yeah, we walked. She said, me and Edric would meet our cousins, Greg and Donald. We would meet some friends in the neighborhood, and we would cut through the neighborhood, and we would walk to Walton. We would hang out, and then we would get together, and we would walk back home. You know, Marilyn said sometimes, they would cheat a little bit and they would go to Maryland's house for lunch and be a little bit late getting back to Walton Junior High. She said when they got older, they would do the same thing, walking all the way to Compton High from our neighborhood. And they would get together, all the cousins, the friends, and they would walk all the way to Compton High. And then after school, they would click up, posse up, and then they would walk all the way back to the neighborhood together. And that just really brought me joy thinking about my mom's childhood because 
when I talked to my wife, her childhood was very similar. She would meet her friends and walk to school and cut through a graveyard where she grew up, and they would cut back through a graveyard going home, very similar to the way my mom grew up. But just the fact, thinking about my mom and her friends and her cousins, walking to school every day, just brought me a certain amount of joy in her childhood and how happy it, she said. She was just glowing telling me about her childhood, and it brought me a lot of joy to, to hear it. But anyway, as we were picking songs, the song she kept picking over and over was a song called Happy Feelings by Frankie Beverly Mays. And I would pick a song, she'd pick Frankie Beverly Mays, Happy Feelings. I'd pick a song, she'd pick Frankie Beverly. She just wanted to keep hearing that song over and over. So now that she's passed, I've kind of associated that song with her, my cousins, Greg, and Ronald Edgerton. Just I Somehow I've, I've associated that with her. And that really encompassed her spirit. She was a joyous, happy person. And St. Paul talks about in, in, the, in the New Testament about being joyful despite your circumstances. Happiness is based on what's going on around you. But joy, you have joy no matter what's going on. It's, it's, it's irregardless of the circumstances, you have the peace and joy of God. And that's what my mom had. So uh, that song really encompassed her. That was her favorite song. And I wanted to share it with you for about 15 seconds just so we can hear the, the couple of words that he was saying. Keep going, keep going. That was my mom right there. <laughs> Happy feelings. Happy feelings everywhere. And so, you know, it's been tough on the immediate family. It's been tough on everybody, obviously, because she, it happened so sudden. But I know she's happy. I know, she, I know for a fact she's with the Lord, and I know she's in a better place. And... She was a strong Christian, and she, uh, her legacy is myself. The grandkids were all strong Christians, and that's the legacy she, she put forward. And we're going to follow it, and we're going to expand it. I know she's with the Lord, and I know she's happy and having happy feelings. Thank you. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you, Damien. That was beautiful. I'm up here to read the obituary. I do have to say this, that I met Renee when they stayed. I think it was probably 84th Street. We used to ride the red and white bus for about... 15 cent down to Broadway and Manchester to the theater. After we watch the movies, we go to the Chicken Shack, buy five cent gizzards and five cent necks. But that's how long I've known her. 
And, <laughs> and she was a uh, flag girl at Compton High. I still see her doing the flag and kicking. And, and this one hurt. You know, it just hurt. Because we know everyone's supposed to die. But we just wasn't expecting it that way. So let me do what I'm up here to do. We'll run into Old Bay somewhere out there. Renee L. Powell was the eldest child of McNeil Maxie Burt and Mildred Jean Charles. She was devoted daughter, sister, mother, grandmother, and educator who left an indelible mark on everyone who knew her. And they spent her early years in South Central Los Angeles before moving to Compton at the age of 12. She attended Walton Junior High School and Compton High School, where she met and married John Powell. Together they welcomed their first son, Ove, followed by their second son, Damien, two years later. Despite the demands of raising two young children, Renee pursued her education with relentless determination. She earned a bachelor's degree from California State University, Los Angeles, and went on to achieve a master's degree in computer science. Later in life, she pursued a doctor's degree in the same field. Her passion for teaching led her to positions of Compton Community College, Long Beach City College, and California State University Dominguez Hills, where she impacted the lives of countless students over a distinguished career spanning over 40 years. Renee retired from her academic position in 2022, but remained a beloved figure in her field. In 1984, Renee moved her family to Carson, California, became a cherished member of Central Baptist Church. She was an active member of the Adult Choir, Finance Committee, Praise and Worship Team, and one thing they left out, she was also a great Sunday school teacher. Through these ministries, Renee built enduring friendships. Her commitment to her faith and community was evident in all aspects of her life. Renee's adventurous spirit was reflected in her love for travel. She explored various states and countries, including a memorial solo trip to Egypt, where she marveled at the great pyramids of Giza. She especially enjoyed visiting her best friend, Marilyn Lundy, in New Orleans. She devoted most of her time watching her children play sports, and volunteering at church. In her later years, Renee found great joy in spending time with her grandchildren, Tyson, Cameron, and Margaret. Her weekends were often filled with family gatherings at the baseball fields, basketball courts, theater, choir performances, or dinners where she delighted in the company of her loved ones. Renee leaves behind her sons, Ovey, and Damien Powell, her siblings, Eldrick Burt, Natasha Charles, and her beloved grandchildren, Tyson, Cameron, and Morgan Powell. Her legacy of kindness, perseverance, and love will continue to inspire those who knew her. The last thing I want to say, Renee was a lady, a lady indeed. God bless you.
full of joy. Some of you remember one of her famous words, what she would say when she'd get ready to start speaking. And how many of you know that word? Oh, we got to do better than that. Let's do it louder. All right, yes, yeah. she would always start it off with a joyful greetings, and she would always get you ready. She'd say, you ready? You ready? And then she would say it. So we're going to do that together. Are you ready? Are you ready? Say it. Greetings. There you go. That's right. Sister Renee was one, and Damien was nailing it. She was always joyful. She didn't li let life's challenges get her down. She was always excited. As a matter of fact, you'd hear her scream sometime in the song from excitement. Sister Renee was a joy to be around. The things that we could look at here at Central was she helped to build this church. She was on the team, the trustee board, when they were planning and putting this together. She was a part of this. We could also look at the fact that She'd done so much in the church. She wasn't just a pew sitter. She was a, about action, doing things. She would get out there and get into it. Wouldn't she do that? I want to pray before I begin. Father God, I thank you today, Lord, for your divine blessings and what you've done for us through our dear sister Renee and how you've allowed us to have that servant in our presence. Lord, we're going to truly miss her along with their family, friends, colleagues, and everyone else. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, for sending her here, sending her into our lives to impact us. So Lord, as I go forward with this eulogy, Lord, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. So Lord, touch this family right now. Touch the sons the siblings, the grandchildren, the daughter-in-laws, the, the in-laws, even the friends, all those that were connected to her, her neighbors and everyone else. Touch them, strengthen them, give them courage and strength to go on. We thank you, Lord, as we go forward in this service. Allow it to be a celebration in Renee's honor. So we ask these and all things in the name of Jesus, our Lord, Savior, and soon-coming King. We ask it all. Amen. 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 I want to thank the family for this opportunity to allow me to eulogize your mother, grandmother, and everyone. Uh, I just thank you so much for this opportunity. We look at Renee's life. Uh, as I said earlier, she was one of the trustees. She served on the finance committee. She served on the praise and music ministry. She served as a Sunday school teacher. She served on the Women on a Mission. She sang on the Mother Bugs uh, Choir, I Need to Take a Breath. <laughs> she served even the Food Giveaway Volunteer Bank. She served everywhere, anywhere she can, not just for people, but for the Lord. She did it for her heart and love for the Lord. And she, uh, she actually allowed that to show in her. When you've seen her up here on this platform or right here on this little X right here, she would be praising him. She'd be waving. She didn't care about no troubles or whatever. She'd be praising him because that's the time when she had her most joy is giving God his praise, his due praise and honor. When it comes to serving in the church, Sister Renee Powell served out of love, true love, not fake love, but true love. The amazing thing about all this is Renee did it all with elegance and class. You ever watch her walk with them heels leaving the church? She would just smoothly just throw, look like she had wheels. And then someone say, Renee, she'd say yes. She'd turn around with elegance. She was a woman of class. She always had that great smile and always in great spirits. And, and I have not talked about the way she dressed. You've seen her. As a matter of fact, I was talking to one of our members uh, uh, last week at his house when I told him about Renee he was, he was shocked but he said that's that woman that looked like she was coming down the runway <laughs> I said yeah, that's the one that's the one she was always and I told her one day I said young lady you are so nice not only that you are dressed like you getting ready to go to a, a modeling contest and he said I said to her you got my vote 
I said, that was her. That was her. We're going to miss her. The thing we look at about Sister Renee Powell is uh, she was one of my biggest cheerleaders. She served on my board. When she passed on, I lost a great one. My trustee board, she had great ideas, and she was always down here in the front after service. She would greet me with a hug, and then she would always say, Pastor, I love you. You're doing a great job. Made me feel t about six feet one. <laughs> I tell you, she made me feel so good because no one is coming from, as I called her, the professor I knew was truly and genuine, true and genuine. Uh, Sister Renee kept it real, as Damien was saying. She kept it real, and I did not know she was a gangster. <laughs> it's new to me. But she did say one day, she said, oh, yeah, you don't know where I came from. I said, I don't want to know. <laughs> the way she said it, let me know, don't mess with me. Don't let this pretty face and this smooth runway walking and all that, I'll roll up some sleeves on you in a quick minute. But she was a joy to be around, and I can truly say she served very well, even under the leadership of the late, great Pastor Emeritus David Bugs. She served tremendous under his leadership. And when I inherited this, I inherited a great woman in Renee Powell. And I can truly say she, was, she will truly and greatly be missed. Right, Ed? Ed? She will truly be missed by many. And I just want to say, just use, just hit on three uh, uh, important biblical features or values of Renee as a woman who lived life well. The number one thing I want to touch on is she lived a life of faithfulness, a life of faithfulness. Just Sister Renee Powell exemplified what it means to walk in faith, just like how the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Sister Renee knew that her work was not in vain. She knew one day she would have to leave this body to go be with the Lord, and she knew that her works would follow her. That describes Sister Renee Powell, that scripture there. As she served her church and most of all her mighty God with teaching, volunteering, singing, praising, and simply just being a friend to those who are in need. The second biblical value I can look at here about Renee is she had a heart for service. It was an action. She had a heart for service. When we look at Mark 10 and 25, Jesus said this. He says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Doesn't that describe Sister Renee well? She gave herself. She was, uh, I heard Damien say she was even recognized even on her street. Sister Renee Powell didn't come sit on the premises, but she stood on the promises of God, knowing that God had her all the way through this. So Jesus reminded us there that he didn't come to be served, but to serve. And he tells us to be servants unto him. Love our fellow man. We look at Sister Renee Powell. She embodied the spirit of Jesus Christ as well as every aspect of her life. She was known to reach out to others with compassion, providing support, and even encouragement. She had a willingness to lend a hand or even a listening ear. Even though sometimes she told, I ain't going to tell you what she said. <laughs> but anyway, when we look at Renee's life, uh, we look at a woman who had plenty of generosity. And not only that, she was loaded with wisdom. Loaded with wisdom. And I'm sure that many of us here today can say that Sister Renee had a major impact on our lives. Why is because Sister Renee was led by the Lord. She let her life be an example of who she served, God Almighty. Anyone else who she knew who needed help, she was there for them. Anyone else that was needing you or needs of something, she was there to lend a hand. 
My final biblical, final biblical value about Sister Renee is this. She leaves us an enormous legacy of love. And I say that again, an enormous legacy of love. Just look around this building and see how many people are here. How many people are saddened in their heart. May not show on their faces, but it's in our heart. We're going to miss her. We're not going to be able to pick up that phone and say, hey, Sister Renee, because that phone may just keep ringing. But listen, folks, as we remember Sister Renee's legacy of love, she knew that talk was cheap. Talk was cheap. I'll be there. She was there if she said it. She was there if she said it. She grabbed her shovel and would get down in the trenches and dig right along with you. She wasn't one of those, uh, get that side over there, you missed a little dirt, you go over here. She would get down in there with you. She put her love into action. She truly demonstrated the love of the Lord by everything she done, her actions. Look around this facility. She had a major hand in building this, doing this here. And I truly believe that uh, uh, that about her is she was truly full of love because of her actions. And we know that love is not just a word we blurt out. Love is an action. An action. You don't slap a wife and say, I love you. The thing is, that she demonstrated her love with embracing pulling you in, letting you know. We look at 1 John 4 and 19, the Apostle John says, we love him because he first loved us. And they demonstrated that. She first loved you. And then guess what? The love in return is up to you. She demonstrated that. And Jesus loved us first, just like uh, 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 he demonstrated that by dying and, and going to the cross. And not only that, resurrecting and not only that coming back to indwell us as believers and then saying I'll never leave you sister Renee leaves is with you all right now she leaves a legacy of how she lived and we could think about it sometimes and I encourage you all sometimes when you're getting ready to cry let those tears turn into tears of joy by thinking of the great things that she's done for you Family, friends, everyone here today, I just want to encourage you all to allow her memory to continue to guide you all throughout this life. As you strive to love others, just remember how Renee loved, one that you could physically touch, hold, and everything. Remember what she left, a legacy of love through Jesus Christ, who she loved. Keep her spirit of love alive in your hearts and in your minds. Family, Damien, Ove, grandchildren, family, siblings, everyone, you're very fortunate to have someone like that in your life. And I can see the example she left on so many of her family, her sisters, her uh, daughter-in-laws, all of you. I'm sure she left a great impact, a great footprint, the professor, the professor as we call her. So in closing, in closing to Sister Renee's family, keep love alive that she's left our prayers and heartfelt condolences are with you all from this day forward anything that we can do we're here for you feel free to call us long after this so on behalf of the entire central baptist family i just want to say we're here for you we're here for you in prayers and i know that praying changes things prayer is power and i encourage you all to pray when those times you feel like i can't go on Take that apostrophe and T off of there and say, I can. I can do it. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Remember this. If you're in Christ, you'll see her again. We don't say goodbye. We say, see you later. That's what we say. We all can remember it's not a loss we have. Sister Renee has moved on. These bodies break down. They get weak. They tire out. But God said he has a new body for us, a resurrected body, a body not made with hands, and that's what we await. Give the Lord a hand praise in here today. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for all that you've done. All eyes have seen today as we came today to celebrate 
We come to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for the precious gift of eternal life through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the comfort of the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of our sorrow. Father God, we thank you for your supernatural grace and power as the promise of our eternal destiny. Father God, we acknowledge today that our loved one, Sister Renee Powell, who is a mother, grandmother, sister, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and a friend to many, is resting with you right now in glory. And she'll be there eternally. So Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for this time that you've allowed her to be in our presence here, knowing, oh God, that we who are in Christ, this is not the end. This is not the end. We will one day see her again. We understand this, Lord. Again, it's not a goodbye, but rather it is see you later. See you later, Renee, in glory. So, Lord, we say today, thank you, Lord, for the life, the legacy, and the love that you instilled in Sister Renee, that she left us all today. She lived a life well. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to give this family, Sister Renee Powell's family, give the entire family comfort as they move forward in this journey in their lives. So, Lord God, we ask you to strengthen them where they're weak, like only you can do. In these days, weeks, months, and years to come, we ask it all, it all in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and soon coming King. We thank you, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And all the saints of God said amen. amen. Give the Lord one more hand praise today. Amen. This concludes our service, celebration of life service for Sister Renee Powell. Come on up. Thank you again. And uh, this picture right here in the front, the small one in front of the rose, that was the last picture of my mom. So maybe before you leave, just come up and take a quick look at it, and you can just see the joy in her eyes. That was me and her checking into the MGM Grand about nine days before she passed. That's the very last picture, the, the little one right here in front of the rose. And we took that as we were in line checking into the MGM Grand. And, and just take a look at her smile. Yeah, yep, yep, <laughs> definitely. So I just want to say that in passing and say thank you. Um, I know my mom was with the Lord. You know, my mom was tough. She didn't fear death at all. She was not afraid of death. I want to share one last story. Uh, this was about five years ago. She called me in a panic. She walked into her house, and three guys had broken in. She walked into a home invasion and ran into three guys. Uh, they broke the bars, but they ran out. And I rushed over there. And, you know, I'm trembling, I'm nervous. And I said, Mom, won't you come back with us? Stay with us for a few nights. Because the, the glass was broken, the bars were bent. You know what my mom said? I'm fine, I'm going to stay here. I said, well, Mom, the glass is broken, the bars are bent. What if they come back? I'll be fine. Go on home, I'll be fine. And she stayed there for a couple of nights before everything got fixed. She just wasn't afraid. Had no fear. Had no fear. Because I think she believed that she knew she was going to the Lord. And she didn't, she didn't fear death at all. So I just want to say thank you one more time. Amen. 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 Like I say, uh, I heard it from uh, her son's mouth. She's a gangster. <laughs> it's a wonder they didn't get, uh, stay too long. <laughs> She'd have probably handled him and came on to church, Bible study. <laughs> Anyway, let's pray. Oh, we already prayed. <laughs> got, me, got me mixed up, Damien. Anyway, did you all enjoy this service today? Because the thing that if we look at is a celebration of life. We could mourn, but listen. Weeping may endure for a night, but what? In the morning. 
may not be tomorrow morning, but it'll be God's morning where you'll be laughing, enjoying yourselves. Just reminisce on the great things that Sister Powell has instilled in you. Amen? Amen. So we're going to stand at this time. I'm going to have my ushers come down and uh, please stay where you are. We're going to escort the family to the social hall. For their, it's going to be a private repast with the family. So please, let's honor uh, their wishes and have privacy in their repast. Amen? Amen? So don't forget, give them a call, reach out to them, send a letter, send something uh, to let them know that you're still thinking about them and you're praying for them. Amen? Amen. I'm going to have the music ministry if you're, oh, they're gone. So anyway, we'll have soft music or oh, happy music. I noticed in that song was going, happy music. I saw some people kind of, there was a little rocking in here. What, what, what's going on, y'all? I was having a good time with it. But anyway, keep them in your prayers. Continue to pray for this family as you lift them up. Amen. The benediction. And now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide his for now and forevermore. We all say amen. Amen. You are listening.
through the tears that made her cry. She felt such pain, some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for She came through the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her body. on him like all from Mary's alabaster cup. Don't be angry. 